What up, guys? It's your girl, Mums from IG. I just wanted to say, go like and subscribe, Petty Tupac TV. Don't care what you comment, as long as you leave a comment. The founding members of the Motor City infamous Cash Flow Posse were brought to justice in a historic bust 20 years ago this summer, concluding a decade-long run atop the diverse and tumultuous southwest Detroit underworld. More than half a dozen Cash Flow Posse leaders were indicted in July 1997 on a laundry list of rock racketeering, drug, and murder charges. It was the first time federal prosecutors in Motown nailed a street gang under the RICO Act. By the following year, five of those indicated had pled guilty. One pled no contest to the charges, and another was convicted at trial. There were a total of five murders and seven shootings and assaults included in the case, highlighted by the 1994 homicides of Evan Eisen, Jimmy Goins, and an innocent bystander, Annie Johnson. Southwest Detroit is mainly Hispanic, is mainly a Hispanic population, but a hot podge of gangland activity, home to both Latino and African American criminal groups, as well as the notorious Highway Men Motorcycle Club, and I can tell you for sure, the Highway Men are notorious. Um, it was started as teenagers by Jerry Quick Wakosh and his baby brother Brutus Wakosh. The Cash Flow Posse, sometimes shortened to just CFP, sprouted up around 1989 in response to a rage and turf war between the neighborhood's Latin counts and Spanish Cobra street gangs, each recent rivals from Chicago. The Wakush brothers aligned themselves with the Latin Counts and commissioned a graffiti campaign to announce the presence in the neighborhoods on buildings, bridges, walls, and soon tagged with cash flow posse shouts or through the territory. Another founding father of the gang, cash flow posse's top enforcer, Ephraim Garcia, aka 12 Gage, was the shooter in all five murders charged. On July 17, 1994, Garcia gunned down CFP rival Jimmy Goins, killing his 15-year-old niece, Annie Johnson, in the process. Four months later, on November 26, 1994, he clipped Evan Eisen, another rival of the CFP, CFP clique. Garcia shot both Goins and Eisen at point-blank range. Eisen was a Spanish Cobra. Goins was alleged to be affiliated with the Folks Nation gang. His niece just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Shirley Johnson's... Uh, Shirley Johnson, Goings' sister, was wounded and attacked, but she survived. According to the court and police records, Going and Quick Wakash had been in a beef for weeks over a girl and that on the afternoon of Goings murder, him and Wakash had gotten into a fist fight at a local park. Pleading guilty to second degree murder, Wakash admitted that Garcia told him of the double homicides hours after it happened. Cash flow posse Lieutenant Greg Shortstop Ballistero pled guilty to second-degree murder in the case, too, admitting he was with Garcia when the hits occurred and personally took part in the shooting. Garcia ran up on Goings on his front porch, unloaded his weapon into him before putting his gun into the family room window and opening fire, striking Goings' niece dead and severely wounding his sister. Gage, don't leave no witnesses. One informer told the feds as to why Garcia fired into the house after successfully hitting his target on the porch. Shortstop Ballestero helped found the cash flow posse in the 1980s but had joined the u.s marine corps and was on summer leave in july 1994 when goings and johnson was murdered found guilty by a jury at a 1998 trial the 48 year old 12 gauge garcia is doing natural life in the michigan department of corrections brutus wakash 44 put in a plea deal of no contest and got slapped with the 30 year prison term he was a uh, parole in 2020 i believe but violated i can't find him on any websites at the moment hopefully he out doing well prosperous and wonderful things for the community using his pool as a result of the respective plea deals ballistro 43 and quick wakash 46 received 12 year sentences apiece they were both released in 2010 on other stuff former cash flow posse initiate and latin counts and highway men uh Associate in the Highwayman Motorcycle Club, Associate Juan Runaway Butler was murdered, most likely inside the Highwayman's Southwest Detroit Clubhouse in March 1999, and a homicide that remains unsolved. Two suspects in Butler's murder, Highwayman leaders Big Daddy Monroe and uh, Mad Anthony Clark, have had their names banded about the, uh, you know, throughout the, the local media, so on and so forth. 
Um, Clark 59 just walked free from a 10 year prison sentence for racketeering uh, earlier this month. The 69-year-old Moore was 11, has 11 years left on his own racketeering conviction, but um, percent, uh, excuse me, persistent court filings revealing a co-defendant's secret relationship with the government agencies might not provide him grounds for a formidable appeal. Getting deep. <laughs> this is deep, man. Butler has served five years in a juvenile detention center for an earlier 1990s arson as a means of earning induction into CFP. The 19-year-old returned home to southwest Detroit in the summer of 98. His body was discovered floating in the Detroit River April 1999. He was stabbed 40 times. Detroit-based rap group, the Insane Clown Posse, and that's not a Detroit-based rap group. But them boys, Eminem said the best. You ain't never seen a, a mile south of 10. For real, for real. But, you know, they call them Detroit guys. The, the term um, cash flow posse still carries pop culture weight in the area and has become synonymous with 90s criminal activity in southwest Detroit. Now, I met Brutus Level 5 Marquette 2019. Um, I almost got into it with one of his members. But one of his members, I don't think he was really like that. So he... You know, it's time to go to showers. Now, level five, you can't come in and out your room. Anytime you go in and out your room, they got to open the door. So, anyway, it's about to be shower time. He talking, his man's, I forget what his name is. Uh, we just going to call him One Eye. One of his eyes was kind of off or something. We just call him One Eye. One Eye was talking to this uh, vice lord member named Bling. And I told um, him, like, stop mentioning my name, to, you know, to the Lord. I don't mess with dogs. You know what I'm saying? They know I don't like them. They don't like me. So, you know, stop mentioning my name to bro, you know what I'm saying? And he go all off the wall. Really, he was starting stuff with me just because he was cool with him. So I say, you know, it is what it is. He said, man, we come out for showers. We're going to see what's up. I was like, all right, bet. Ain't nothing to talk about. So he yelled out to Brutus and um this other dude, man. He a real, real hitter for the counts. But he yelled out there. He say, um, hey, big brute, I'm about to go to the hole. He like, what you want? He like, is that bird ill? They yell back. Bro, it's like, chill. Hey, chill. Big homie talk. Chill. Me and Brutus got a little relationship. Now, Brutus mended something. I had another situation with some vice lords to where he came in between and said, no, nah, you know, that's that's the little homie. You know, we, we got respect for him. Leave that alone for me. You know what I'm saying? If y'all going to do what y'all going to do, make sure y'all shoot the ones. And the dude who he told that to didn't want to shoot the ones because, like I said, a lot of gang members, a lot of people in prison, period, are punks. They hide behind other people, you know what I'm saying, they the, you know, they the, they the uh, beta male, and the alpha male run everything, it's only, a f you know, if it's a gang of 50 people, only two of them really tough like that, you know what I'm saying, but uh, nevertheless though, um, Brutus hollered at him, then Brutus had to come check me, because he like, bro, why you still come to shower with your shoes on if it wasn't nothing up, I had to explain to him, like, your man's a little crazy, bro, so I still came to shower prepared, I wasn't going to do nothing to him, so on and so forth. And, you know, anyway, we killed it. Brutus, cool guy, bro. Brutus, cool guy. 100. He was on some positive stuff. He wasn't on no game banging stuff. I got to say this, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just reading a story, man. I didn't make up these facts or nothing like that. This is all documented stuff. Um, uh, the Michigan Department of Correction sites and uh, circuit courts, when you look up this type of stuff, I ain't getting to a string detail about it because, uh, you know, when you say you worried about ruffling feathers, like you, like the highway men, cash flow posse, uh, uh, definitely the highway men. When you, you you rough for them type of feathers, which I'm gonna do something on them, rather than you know. Come on, man, this is just what I do, and it's interesting, and it's informative. But you want to show respect, definitely, to certain, like them, <laughs> them boys is real deal stubbers. You hear me? I, I get kind of, I get the chills talking about the boys. You know what I'm saying? But. Yeah, Brutus a real real dude, man. A cash flow posse. Shout out oh, cash flow trip. That's my baby. Um free Jesse, Latin Cow Jesse. I hope y'all enjoyed this, man. Peace and blessings be upon y'all, man. Big five.